please go ahead. Very happy to uh, for you to share your screen. Thank you. So, uh, uh, yeah. First of all, um, good evening and uh, and good afternoon. Uh, and thanks very much for the opportunity. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to present this. I call this as case two because at case one, I was so excited I forgot to uh, actually mark it with the uh, L's and R's, and that's why it became useless. So this will be case two, but it's case one for presentation. No problems at all. I was going to say, don't feel worried about not marking because even that can be included in your peer review. There's no criticism at all. Because uh, so you know, if you want to share that case today as well, please by all means, we'd be very happy to see it. Thank you, thank you very much. I'll see. Um, th this case actually is a is a is a is a case series. Uh, I mean, it's a case, but it, it's a case follow up. But uh, before I get started, I'm just going to introduce you to our machine. It's a sonocyte, and this is this is the uh, screen that will greet you once you start. So I'll give you the transducer uh, an exam type. So usually lung is listed under the uh, uh, hockey stick um, uh, probe. Um, so it's easy. You don't need to play much with the setting. You just choose lung and then you start scanning by going here. Um, so the uh, this first case is a preterm baby who is 31 weeks. Now he's actually coming up to three weeks of age. So he was born three weeks ago. Um, so in section, he had uh, his mum had two doses of antenatal steroids, uh, so a full course. But he was not in a good shape when he came, um, and his birth weight was, as you can see, just under 1.4 kilos. Uh, he was started as usual on high flow nasal cannula at six liters, but his FiO2 kept kept going up until 60%. At that point, he was intubated and ventilated. That was uh, three hours of age. Uh, we were all taken by the fact that he is unexpectedly behaving badly given his degree of prematurity and his weight. So he got uh, himself uh, intubated and ventilated and he, he earned uh, a first dose of surfactant. And then a second dose of surfactant was given uh, later. And in fact, he had three doses of surfactant, which is not our usual practice. Um, and he was really getting worse. Um, muscle relaxed and sedated um, with increase in ventilatory settings. And he ended up uh, on uh, oscillation for three days. Uh, he is currently still ventilated, believe it or not, at the age of three weeks, which is very, very unusual nowadays. Uh, but he also has a, a significant PDA, which was, uh, it was 3.5, but he was actually, he was having an echo today, and it was still uh, four millimeter with volume overload, um, bearing in mind that he's had two courses of paracetamol. Amazing. So now I'm just going to go through the uh, series of his lung ultrasound. Uh, this is done. This was done on the second of the second, which means it was ten days ago, when he was about um, ten days of age. Beautiful. This is R, this is R one. Yeah. Uh, and as I could see, the uh, blue line is. Uh, a bit hazy, um, not nicely defined. There is plural sliding though. Uh, and the, all these scans, to bear in mind, all these scans were done when he is ventilated yep. conventionally after the oscillation is is is, is finished. Um, and I, and it's 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 in in my view, R1 is predominantly a, a, a B profile uh, scan. Um, almost homogeneously. So um, if we move to R2, again, there are some uh, comet uh, uh, artifacts in addition to the plural sliding, but there is still, there is there is some uh, A profile that I could see on the right of the screen. So- I agree it, with that completely, think, yeah. Yeah. Then I'm just gonna move to the, uh, Next, 
Yeah. Um, uh, so that's our tree. Uh, he, he is nursed. Uh, at the time of the scan, he was nursed prone. So, uh, so he, sorry, so fine. So there are no uh, no R fives and R six. No. Uh, yeah, so this is R three, and again, it is a reflection of really or a continuation, in my view, of R one uh, with again uh, confluent uh, B profile picture with pleural sliding still, but it's not as crispy as you would like it to be. And then R4, uh, uh, again, it is indicating the predominancy of the B profile still. Lovely, that's beautiful. We'll have a look at your left-sided images as well, and then we'll come back, yeah? Okay. So this is L1. Beautiful, very nice. I, I, I think my compliments to you for managing to get the heart out of the way. That's an amazing image. Thank you. It's a uh, it's a hockey stick. I mean, the heart will be popping in and out every now and then, but I was just doing my best to avoid it. Um, I'll get away from it. Here, here we go. In L two, uh, it was uh, uh, inevitable. So the heart is is especially that this baby, as I said, has got a very large uh, duct and uh, yeah, his heart is yeah, good decent size. Yeah, thank you. Uh, again. Going to move to the next one. Uh, no, I think is that next one. Uh, that's R one. This is baby two B. So may ah uh, uh, sorry. Uh, I think I've missed the I've missed the no uh, the L three and L four. Sorry about that. Not a problem. That's that's okay. So could we go this, back to your initial images? Okay, that's, that's... Uh, because we will be moving to a different date, uh, three days later. So yeah, do yeah. you want to go back to? Let's have a look at these images, because I think what we would like in our mind is to form a clinical picture of what we think might be wrong with the baby. Yeah. So it would be really helpful. Uh, so let's just have a look at your first yeah. two images. Uh, just a few questions. I mean, at this stage, how long has the baby been ventilated? Uh, at this, about, about uh, 11 days. Okay. Uh, has been ventilated for 11 days. And the age of the baby is three weeks? About uh, no, no, it, it's about eleven days. It's uh, 11 the, days. Current age, the current age of the baby is about three weeks, but this sure. or oh, these scans were done when he was about eleven days of age. Okay, okay, that's great. So, just image profile with the clinical history, very nice. So, can I just say, really good depth, five centimeters. Uh, I think what you've got is an absolutely beautiful machine. So, you don't really, with the sonocyte, have to uh, fix the focus at the pleural margin. Very similar to the GE machine. It tends to fix its pixels uniformly across the entire image. And uh, that is the beauty of using the sonocyte. So you've got, you know, uh, at least one, two, three intercostal spaces, three ribs. Uh, you've got a plural line that looks very irregular. And what you've classically got is you've got B lines. And as Nadia was mentioning yesterday with, uh, with everybody, new machines tend to have filters which will tend to filter artifact out. So it kind of attenuates the B lines, but actually in terms of being able to diagnose a B profile, I think all of you will agree. I mean, this is a virtual uh, kind of white appearance to the entire lung with the B lungs that are basically coalesced together. Uh, so the pleura being irregular, you've got the slightly irregular appearance below the pleura. Those are subpleural consolidations. So that, that appearance that you would label as RDS, uh, you know, in a baby uh, is there. But obviously, again, you're clinically correlating. This baby is well down. So what you're really seeing is sequelae of RDS. You know, for a baby who's still ventilated 11 days, I think the key question you're asking is, is this evolving chronic lung disease in a kind of a, a baby who's not so preterm? So that's one possibility. The other thing is obviously making sure that you don't have evidence of infections. Certainly over here, I don't see any areas that give me a firm feel for consolidation. There's an artifactual line running in between the screen. So horizontally, do you want to just put your uh, arrow on that? It, it just waves. That's it. it so that's not consolidation in my mind. I think that's just a little bit of artifact that you see over there. Mm -hmm. But uh, what you can classically see is a kind of a whiteout with irregular pleura, which is blurred and which has got subplural consolidations. And then if you go to R2, 
And this is very important. And this is where I come back to the, the kind of uh, uh, conclusion that, you know, a, a lot has been said about double lung points and their uh, kind of absence in other conditions other than TTN. But the fact is surfactant treated babies and babies who have lung disease, which is getting better, will have differential aeration. And what you're looking at classically is that the right sided lung in the lower half is actually better aerated than the right upper lung. Now, again, what I'd say is uh, where, where there's no consolidation, but if you have slightly better aerated right-sided lung at the bottom, you know, one of the questions I always ask myself in these babies is, did, did this baby get a little bit more or better surfactant down the right lower lung early on? And it's inevitable. You can have the tube in the right place. And I often see this appearance in extremely preterm babies. Early clinical course, the baby had two doses of surfactant or it was CPAP throughout and then got intubated. No, no, uh, actually had the uh, high flow for only three hours and then intubated straight away because of the bad um, bad gases and uh, bad clinical conditions, blood, bad gases and FiO2 reaching up to 60%. So he he had actually three doses of surfactant in different time intervals, which will uh, reflects the how desperate we were. We don't usually give three doses of surfactant. Absolutely. So he's an exception. Sure. Uh I think again, beautiful images, good depth. You can see the, you know, the the kind of, and I would say the artifactual anatomy all the way through. Good sliding, irregular pleura, comet tails with V lines, but definite evidence of aeration, in particular in the lower half of the lung fields. Uh, so beautiful images. I mean, I I would I would say that uh, in terms of image optimization. I wouldn't stress too much. I think, you know, sometimes there's a lot of anxiety in the group. Oh, my images don't look so good. I am not worried as long as I can and you can get the right clinical information from the images. And I think these images give me good amounts of clinical information. Uh, Abhijit, would you like to come in? Um, yes, Alok. Uh, we have, again, uh, compliment uh, on the images, Charitin. Excellent images. Um, uh, I would like to know uh, uh, in this scenario, uh, what was the pressure you were having on the ventilator? Um, he, uh, at, at that point, his, his uh, inspiratory pressure was uh, 24. Uh, so 24 right. over five, that was the setting. Right. And in the due course after this, um, uh, obviously we're gonna come to the, you know, uh, three days afterwards um, scans, but did you have to go up on the pressures by any means? Um, uh, initially, yes, uh, until we reached, obviously, uh, uh, a pressure of, uh, it, it wasn't me who was looking at him to start with, it was my colleague. So he mm -hmm. reached up to a 26 pressure. And then at that point, because of the, there is no, he's not getting anywhere, he decided right. to go and oscillate him. Yeah, right. So um, uh, the point I'm trying to make here is it, it can be different scenarios. Of course, this on the day one of uh, life, you know, RDS uh, subclural consolidations um, would indicate more towards the RDS. Now, given 11 days uh, of life and on ventilator. Um, so if I do an image uh, scan and I see this kind of an image, the things comes to my mind is, are we giving adequate pressure to the uh, through the ventilator? Number one. Number two, preterm babies, day 11 of life, has the duct opened up, uh, you know, flooding the lung. Um, uh, if they flood the lung, uh, you can see a different, you know, differential kind of a uh, picture there, you know, um, uh, what do you call this, uh, AB profile, uh, if you say so. Um, uh, <clears throat> more of the, because B lines basically means is you have more fluid in the lung, basically, isn't it? So um, uh, duct is uh, the second consideration I will take. Um, yeah, uh, uh, but otherwise, um, beautiful images, um, and uh, um, uh, we'll be interested to see how after three days it looks like and what kind of an intervention you did within those three days to, uh, you know, uh, get the differential um, uh, images on the day three. Yeah, yeah I'm just, uh, I'm just gonna. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm, I'm just gonna move to um, the, the three days later. That's here. Um, yeah. That's again R one, R two. Um, 
the, the, to be honest with you, um, there might be a marginal improvement. This is my interpretation. There might be a marginal improvement in the aeration of the lung with the with an eye of fate, perhaps a bit of uh, A profile here and there. But the, again, it is predominantly B profile, uh, maybe mm -hmm. not as affluent as it used to be. Uh, the, the baby at this point, he is two weeks of age. He's got a large duct. He received five days of paracetamol, didn't touch the duct at all. Um, his FiO2 has improved. So his requirement of FiO2 was uh, initially 40. <coughs> now he is anywhere between uh, 20, 25 to 30 uh, percent. That's why I was reluctant to increase to go up on the pressure as long as we have, uh, have, have are having good FiO2 requirement and uh, very good blood gases. And it was leaning more on the duct being, being really the main contributory factor at this stage to his RDS for him to get stuck on the ventilator. I think again, uh, very nice images, uh, good depth. Uh, you've got a plural line. And for everybody, I think what I, I just want to emphasize in this slide is the plural line actually looks continuous and then looks irregular. And one of the questions that I think Kirti asked yesterday is, is my pleural line abnormal? And really, it's the difference between the lung being inflated during inspiratory cycle of the ventilator versus the lung being deflated in the expiratory cycle. So when the pleural line is regular, it's probably an expiratory phase where you have, you know, and what you can see is that in the inspiratory phase, the upper half, your A lines become more prominent, both in R1 and R2. So what it's basically reflecting at this particular point, and this is something to clinically correlate, is better aeration during the inspiratory cycle of ventilation. And then really the, the A-lines tend to disappear a bit between the expiratory cycle. And you, you kind of in the subplural region have small areas where there are breakages in the pleura. And that is actually a reflection of the fact that you've, lo you've lost some volume during the expiratory phase. So in itself, it's not pathological. And for me, that is not shed sign. This is an important thing that I want to emphasize. Some people might think that in the middle of R1, would you like to just point it out, Dr. Zaruddin? I'd be so yeah. great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Just there. Yeah. That so that might be shed sign. It's not. Because actually, when you look at the inspiratory cycle, the pleura becomes irregular and it disappears. And what you have is a predominantly B profile in both these images. And again, it comes back to what Abhijit says. And... I mean, at the moment, what we're doing is we're giving you different patterns. So this entire month till the end of February, you're, you're going through pattern recognition, which you can get the same pattern on day one, which will give you a different clinical interpretation based on your clinical correlation. And you'll get a similar pattern on day 12 or 13. And the key thing is if you've been following up, there's certain differentials that you'd keep in mind. Now, that will be different for an unintubated baby and different for an intubated baby. And for an unintubated baby who's getting more tachypneic, say, you might find that there might be elements of infection. Uh, there might be a duct. They might actually, from your perspective, be a situation with the baby having evolving chronic lung disease. You know, other differentials to kind of think about in that situation are kind of collapse, consolidation, secondary to aspiration. You know, these near preterm babies where feeds are being built up will often have micro aspirations. Now in the intubated baby, you can have all of these conditions, but the other thing that you must consider is how your ventilation affects the actual images. This is crucial. And the reason I say that is you're doing a lung ultrasound at one point of time. You're looking at this lung at one point of time. Uh, this is not a serial kind of 12 hourly kind of a lung ultrasound. So really your ventilation can actually impact the, the lung ultrasound appearance, as can the position of your tube. And a small thing, like if I'm doing serial scans every day and I want to kind of have a look at those images, I will go back and always make sure, well, is the tube still in the same position? Uh, it's, it's an opportunity here because actually if you find, you know, that R1 is completely consolidated and collapsed as opposed to the previous scan images, has the tube gone down? You know, is it something that I need to look at when I look at the suprasternal views? But in terms of my interpretation at the moment, I would say that a little bit of better aeration in the upper half, like you said, uh, definitely a B profile in the lower halves. Uh, but that plural line is similar. And I just wonder whether you've got, I mean, the, the possibilities are again, the duct and evolving lung disease. But in terms of the images, I have uh, no critique. I mean, these are nice images. Well done, sir.
<laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, Abhijit, anything that you'd like to add? No, I think uh, that's it, Alok. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, the things we are, we are also interested in, there are a lot, lot of papers also coming up now, you know, um, uh, lung ultrasound aided lung, uh, sorry, uh, yes, ultrasound aided lung recruitment, yep. where um, where they go on increasing the pressures looking at this um, scan. And if I have to tell you in the studies, what they have done is this is, they call it as, you know, um, uh, sort of uh, uh, opening pressure and closing pressure. So uh, I would believe that this is somewhere near the closing pressure. So, um, uh, you know, they, they go up to the point where they can see most of the A lines and they retract a pressure of one or two by then just to get the B lines and stop there. Um, uh, but again, this is uh, in its infancy, so uh, I'll not advocate <laughs> doing that at the moment. But this, this sort of gives you an idea that, you know, sometimes um, the pressures are inadequate. Sometimes it's the duct that's flooding the lung. And if you see this kind of image on day one, that's have completely different connotation. I guess I will do this in the advanced course, uh, advanced lung course, uh, lung ultrasound course next time. Uh, we'll have we'll have oh. six months. Trust me, you will. You all of you, all of you will go very far in the six months. Not to worry. Uh, Thank you. Carry on. Uh, I'm just gonna quickly. Sorry, I took a lot of time. That's right. I think they're nice images. Good for the group to see. Yeah. Uh, so th this is uh, our tree. Uh, and uh, for um, to be honest, um, I I didn't see three days down the line. I didn't see much of a change in this uh, baby's images. Um, uh, as I said earlier, I'm hopeful that there might be some marginal improvement, but uh, I feel that they are pretty much the same with the with regard to aeration and. Uh, uh, an RDS, so it's still the plural line, line similar comments, uh, B profile mainly uh, on both R3 and R4, I guess. Is your ductal profile changing in this period with treatment? I'm just curious, just when no, you not, assess your... Not really, The you mean the PDA? Yeah. N not at all, the uh, five days of paracetamol didn't touch it at all. Okay. And I mean, I'm assuming at this point, this baby's about two and a half, maybe coming to three weeks, just under three weeks. Uh, at this point, uh, just over two weeks. Of just age. over two weeks. Okay. Yeah. I mean, one of the options in that situation uh, is, I think in particular, if you have left atrial and left ventricular volume loading, is giving the baby uh, a, a reasonable dose of frisomide and just doing a pre and post scan and seeing now uh, a lot of people kind of feel anxious about giving frisomide and ducks. There's one paper on 14 cases which says that it can keep the PDA open. It's in my mind, a lot of rubbish. I, I think, you know, for volume loading of a heart in a baby that's ventilated, uh, a short period of improving lung compliance by offloading the LALV uh, and decreasing preload on the RV can sometimes help. Now, the reason I say that, and the context in which you would be using lung ultrasound in this situation is, is disappearance, simple lung disease that you can't do anything about. You just have to gently ventilate, allow this baby to kind of proceed to a, a kind of a nutritional state that allows growth of the lungs. Or is this a duct that's contributing where the fluid is the element in the interstitial and intralobular and interlobular spaces that you could change with symphrosomide. Or as Abhijit has mentioned, is, is, is this a baby who needs more lung recruitment? And I would be very cautious of the lung recruitment study. And the reason I say that is if you've got a decent CO2, you're accepting a permissive hypercapnia, FiO2 is 30%, then this is, this is actually acceptable. Because what it's saying to me is that that lung is oxygenating this baby reasonably well, and you've got enough lung recruitment to actually give yourself good CO2 clearance. And the risk of wanting to achieve further lung inflation at the cost of producing visible A-lines on the ultrasound will actually lead to volutrauma because you'll need higher volumes. So you will contribute indirectly to lung damage. And a, a simple example that I'll give you is very bad PIE with air trapping. I see a lot of A-line appearance. So, I, I would say that, you know, that's the differentials you're thinking of, and that's how you're using lung ultrasound then to 
or to your management. And you might find that none of this makes any changes. And really what you're stuck with is a baby who really needs probably to get some steroids to try and get off the ventilator to help reduce lung inflammation. And uh, that, is, that is the challenge. And it's very similar to doing x-rays. We do x-rays at this period and actually nothing changes. You know, you have this chronic lung disease kind of an appearance where you're trying to basically gently ventilate. In terms of image critique, I think that's the really nice images, you know, good depth. Again, I just wonder whether in the lower part of the image, like there's a small area that looks a little bit dark, white, white, sorry, just R3. R3. So if you come to R3 in the middle, just whether you might with the expiratory phase be having a little bit of atelectasis there in that side, uh, whether that's, I'd, I'd be surprised if that's a single isolated A line because A, it would be quite deep. It could okay. be, and it could reflect maybe differential aeration, but experience would say, I just wonder whether there might be an element of atelectasis over there. And again, the, the way you'd, you'd, you'd find out is you could put the pressures up a little bit and repeat an ultrasound and see if that actually disappears. But this is predominantly kind of white lung appearance. There are, as Mayank has kind of alluded to in the chat, uh, the, uh, you know, he, he clearly, you're right, that could be consolidation. The fact that it disappears, you know, during the expiratory phase means that there's an element of aeration. So it could be atelectasis and differentiating it can be a challenge. The, uh, the reason that I'm actually smiling is that uh, number one is how, how meaningful and useful having a, a feedback from experienced colleagues and uh, I, I'm really loving it. Uh, because uh, I probably did the same thing that you um, down your lines of thought, and I'm very pleased that um, uh, I did the same thing. Um, because at this, at this point, uh, after finishing the paracetamol course, uh, I actually started this baby on a, a, a two to three day course of um, intravenous furosemide, mm -hmm. uh, and trying thinking the, the same way. Um, that is after a, a, a very short trial of volume guided uh, ventilation yep. trying to uh, get away from just the constant pressure and to avoid the volume trauma um, but it, the, the volume guided again uh, it's another uh, lesson to be reinforced is that it doesn't suit every baby yep. and so he didn't agree with it very much he actually in order to achieve the tidal volume um, you will need higher much higher pressure while I was settled with good gases good FiO2 so I thought okay I'll just put him back to the uh, uh, SIPPV um, and then started a course of furosemide for three days and then after that there's no improvement I have to uh, do another shorter course of paracetamol just as a last resort and at that point I started talking to his parents about ligation of duct. Mm -hmm. And uh, are you able to get percutaneous ligations or would it be a surgical ligation? Uh, it would be a surgical, I'm afraid. It would yeah, be a surgical. Okay, that's all right. That's, I mean, it's, I think 90% of the world, you know, uh, is uh, going to have to have surgical ligations. So that's, yep, I, I think thought process is exactly the same. Have you got some more images or? Yeah, I, I think just in, uh, this is L3, L, uh, sorry, no, no, that's again, L5. Uh, so this is uh, the, L1 and L2 on the same day, that's three days later. And I... Better aeration. You've definitely got an AV profile. And again, with inspiration, expiration, you, you can see A-lines just above the heart. Uh, so yeah, and very nice images. But again, some coalescent B-lines that yeah. come after it when the baby uh, kind of expires. So yeah, very nice images, yeah. And then uh, again, L3 and L4, same day. Yeah. Uh, and then just in the interest of time, I'll go to today's images. He's still yeah. ventilated. Yeah. He had two courses of uh, his blood yes. gases better. Uh, yeah. His FO2 now can be anywhere between 22 to 25%. His blood gases are very, very good. Uh, still the duct is large, it's four millimeter today. So he's still waiting to have his duct ligated now. He's listed to have it ligated. Amazing. Much better aeration. I mean, like I, I think everybody would agree that you can you can see visible A lines uh, with still a you know a dominant B profile, but much better aeration as compared to the previous R1, R2 images. Well done, sir. Yeah. 
So could we do this one, uh, R3 and R4? And I mean, especially R4, very, very nice aeration. Uh, R3 mm, as well. R4. Yeah. Abhijit, uh, come in. Yeah, please. Luckily, we can carry on. Yeah. So this is L1 and L2. And then L3 and L4. I, I have a feeling that the L, uh, R4 probably is better aerated than the L4. So perhaps the right side is, is, is better than the uh, left side at yeah. the lung bases relatively. Although there is a bit of a A lines appearing towards the base of the left lung, but the, the appearance of A lines in R4 were more clearly delineated than the L4. Amazing. Especially, especially here. Yeah, completely visible, good pleural sliding and uh, a white lung appearance. So very nice images. Yep. So just uh, as as has been uh, planned, the, the just three sam samples of his X-rays uh, on admission. That is uh, his RDS degree, and then this is uh, three days later uh, when he was oscillated. Uh, that's his chest X-ray. Uh, then this is. Uh, on the first, on the day when he had his first lung ultrasound scan, and that is, uh, uh, he is on just on back on conventional ventilation. There is a, an interesting feature here that I wanted just to share with my uh, colleagues here. That I put a long line here, and you can see that it's gone in on the uh, left side here. And I was really kind of puzzled by how do I explain this? And I spoke to the cardiologist, I couldn't find the answer myself. Left so SVC. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so he's got a, a, a left SVC. Amazing. Very nice. Thank you. Uh, my, my, is there a time for a very quick last case, which would be much shorter? Really? I was gonna, could we do it next time, Dr. Zahid? Okay. Just no I'd be so grateful uh, just to allow the others. But um, what, what I'd Absolutely. say is the next peer review session is this Friday with Nadia, and we'll have another peer review session on Sunday. So okay. we're having lots, we'll have three sessions this week and we'll have two next week. So okay. thank you so much. Thank do you so save much. your log books and update them. And you know, if you'd like to save your images, you can save videos by inserting object. And I'll, uh, in the next session before Nadia starts, I'll take you to how to do it. Lovely. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you. So Dr. Sharif, uh, have, is Dr. Sharif here today? Yes. Yes. Beautiful. Dr. Sharif, right. thank you. Right. Uh, thank you very much for your extraordinary efforts. Uh, really, um, that, that's very, very useful. And I want to thank all the faculty as well. Um, so can I just let you know, because I'm on duty and I might need, hopefully not everything stable, but it, in case they call me, uh, I'm sorry, I, I need to go in case of emergency. No problems. Okay, shall I share my screen? Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes, very nice. Uh, Abhijit, I'm going to let you crack on with this one. Yeah, no worries. So I'm going to mute myself. Okay. Uh, right, so um, the machine that we use is a, a GE machine and the probe we use is linear one, linear probe. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, my, my first presentation. This is the case of uh, uh, eternal baby, 39 plus two weeks, born by vaginal delivery. Mom has a GBS induced pregnancy. And the baby was born uh, with a birth weight of 3.3 kilos, uh, had thick meconium at delivery, and needed CPAP initially with um, high oxygen requirement, 60%. And then um, after CPAP, the oxygen improved. 
the baby was screened for suspecting infection and antibiotics stopped after 48 hours in the view of negative cultures and negative CRPs. Baby went to full feeds and by breast. And by four days of age, the baby uh, was still on vacuum for respiratory distress, and the respiratory rate was more than 70, um, but um, on very low uh, parameters on the vacuum three liters and uh, very low oxygen, like no oxygen requirement, basically. So I, I did the uh, ultrasound for this baby uh, because the baby was still tachypneic at day four, and uh, I that was the x-ray on day one so i haven't repeated that because the baby was improving clinically and uh, mm -hmm. i could see that uh, sorry about the quality of the picture but basically it's going more with ttn i could see some uh, long fissures if you agree about that uh, and the baby was clinically improving um so i, I did by uh, an ultrasound day four the good thing about this baby mom was around so she, mm -hmm. was, she was able to help me and to hold the baby for me in the six, like yeah, on the prone and a back position. So it was good. Yeah. So I um, you know, uh, I'm taking the loop on the on the machine for nearly five seconds or even more. But when I saved the images, it came like very quick, like it, it came like less than a second. So I, I'm not sure why. So I, I just wanted to ask you this question. I tried several times from different babies, but always it come like uh, less than a second. Uh, but on the machine itself, give me the whole loop of five seconds. So I'm not sure what is the reason. But I can start, uh, I'll keep pressing uh, just to show you. In the R1, I could see some, um, uh, like the plural is sliding, the plural is regular, I would say. Um, sorry, that's the R1. Uh, I can see this is, the, uh, this is the mainly A profile. Um, uh, even I can see common tail, uh, but, um, like, but I can't see like a complete um, B line. So it's mainly A profile. On the R2, <coughs> The same, I can see the pleura is regular, uh, sliding, and it's. Uh, I can see lots of A lines. However, yeah. here I, I, I don't have full explanation. I, I believe this is an artifact, but I, I'm not entirely sure what this space comes from. This one, I mean, but it's mainly again A profile. Some common tails uh, here, but uh, it's mainly A profile. The third one is um, uh, this is the R3. I took your advice uh, raising the baby's arm. Uh, mom was very helpful, and that was really helpful as well. Um, and I can see that there, there is a good sliding. There is um, mainly a profile. Yeah. Um, yeah. So going to, oh, uh, this is R4 again. Plural sliding. I see some common tails here um, on the in the upper long field, but it's again mainly uh, a profile. R five. Yep. Think the baby probably start to move, but uh, from what I can see. Uh, sure. It's it's not really clear in in this view to see, but I can see it literally sliding and. Uh, I can't really remember that. Um, mm -hmm. This is uh, R6. Uh, I can see Pelura sliding, the Pelura is regular, um, and I can see more airlines. Uh, however, the quality here is not great, and the gain as well. Uh, okay, so coming to the next one, this L1. Again, uh, with the little sliding, it's regular, mainly a profile. Yeah. And here I could see more common tails, but it's not more than three in its interstitial space, and it's mainly a profile. And here it's mainly a profile with regular pleura. So, uh, and this is the rest of the views, mainly a profile. I can't see any from B lines at all. Uh, 
similarly here. So I, I got the feeling that the, from, from this scan, um, um, the baby's um, lungs are nearly normal. And I, I took off the vaposarm. I was quite confident to take off the vaposarm despite of the tachypnea. And then I saw the baby a couple of days back and the baby was absolutely fine. Um, so it, it was a use, very useful tool just to get an idea about the lung. Um, sure. Yeah, beautiful images, Dr. Sharif. Um, can you go back to R1 um, <clears throat> just to, uh, you know, um, talk about the images now? Um, uh, can you tell me what, uh, which machine uh, you're using, which scanner you're using? Yeah, this is General Electric and uh, mm -hmm. it's linear probe. Um, right. I believe it, it's nine. Nine right. Okay. Um, I'm not sure why it's not storing, uh, you know, uh, longer than uh, a second or so uh, of the loop. Um, uh, but in some, uh, you know, scanners, each time you go and do the uh, scan, you have to uh, rotate the knob um, um, just to increase your cycle, cycle length uh, of the loop. Uh, nonetheless, uh, good images. Um, so um, just to you know, critique on the uh, images now in the R1 section. Now, given that this baby is a well-grown term baby, 39 weeker, uh, with all the uh, background which we have noted already, um, I would expect to see a ossified um, you know, uh, ribs. So to make the image uh, you know, perfect uh, in terms of uh, you know, um, uh, making it perpendicular with the probe, uh, the point at which we'll know that you are exactly 90 degree on the pleural line is that you should be able to see the um, uh, ribs and the acoustic shadowing. So mm. if you see your R3, uh, just above the pleural line, you can see your ribs nicely. If you see on the R3. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's your pleural line. And just above that, you can see your ribs and nice acoustic shadowing. Yeah. And because you very perpendicular to it the the uh, the pleura looks a bit more uh, you know sort of uh, continuous sharp and discreet compared to your r1 and r2 where it appears a bit broken so it's not exactly broken it's just the you know the angle of interrogation with your probe basically so if you are <clears throat> the point i'm trying to make here is to have the correct interpretation uh, of this scan or to get the uh, you know, the um, right image of the pathology or the pleura, you have to be, you know, um, bang on 90 degree on the pleura. So the, to make sure that you are, uh, you should be able to see uh, your uh, rib, uh, you know, the ribs and the acoustic shadowing. You might not be able to see acoustic shadowing all the time, um, especially so if it is a, you know, compact B lines, uh, but you should be able to see rib in some form or the other. So in R1 and R2, um, uh, uh, the um, uh, the reason we are not seeing that is because we are not perpendicular with the pleura at that point, uh, you know, of contact. And yes, I agree. It's all A profile. I can see some comet tails. I cannot see any B lines whatsoever in R1, R2, R3, or any of the images for that, uh, you know, Jones for that matter. And um, moving on, just before we move on, uh, you talked about the artifact in R2. Sorry, Dr. Sharif, if you can go uh, back to R2. R2. Yes. Okay. Yeah, you talk about the artifact there. So uh, this is uh, the classical uh, example of the mirror image. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a mirror image, but you can see B lines, uh, sorry, not B lines, the uh, comet tail or the lung rocket artifacts there. Mm -hmm. um, hence, it is not a uh, um, pneumothorax. But had it been like there is no pleural sliding, and no B lines or comet tail artifacts, and you can see your, um, you know, the mirror image, then that would have been a, a sign of a, a pneumothorax. By mirror image, I mean, this is what you are seeing. If you can go take your cursor above the pleural line on the anechoic areas, the black areas, uh, above the pleural line, above the pleural line. Above the Okay. Yeah. So, so those are the area, those, those anechoic areas is being reflected directly below the pleural line. Yeah. Yeah. Those, those are the areas which are reflected. <laughs> that is the area where your rib should be coming up when you are totally perpendicular yeah. to it. Yeah. And then, so, uh, um, you should be able to see that on both sides of the pleura, if this is, you know, if there is a, a predominantly a profile, so, because 
air is not a very good medium for ultrasound waves and it reverberates continuously. So you see a mirror image artifact. So that's a mirror image artifact, which you're seeing there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Wait. Okay. Uh, shall I go to the next presentation? Uh, yeah, you can go to the next one. Right, okay, so this is the second one. Uh, let me, uh, okay, so this is 29 plus five uh, weaker baby, a day four of life. Uh, he's corrected gestation on 30 weeks and one day. Um, background has um, emergency cesarean septum for preeclampsia, steroid was mature and magnesium sulfate given. Uh, incubated and two doses of surfactant uh, were given. So initially one dose was given after birth and then because of uh, in, uh, still increased oxygen requirement uh, and this baby was referred to us from another hospital so they were not sure even if the first surfactant uh, was inside the lung because they got from the NZT. So mm -hmm. Not sure but by Day two of life when the baby was here, we preferred to give the second dose of surfactant because the uh, uh, oxygen requirement uh, was still high. So after the second dose of surfactant, baby was extubated at day three, five to mm -hmm. eight, um, eight liters and 30% of oxygen. Um, there was, I would say, moderate work of breathing and the baby was tachypneic, uh, but was maintaining the saturation the FI2 requirement was 38%, and uh, there was moderate uh, work of breathing with uh, saturation uh, above 94%. So the was fine, there was no sepsis concerned, uh, antibiotics stopped. That was the X ray uh, before giving the second dose of surfactant when the baby was still uh, intubated. And as you can see, there is a, um, a, a ground glass appearance and a bronchogram. Um, mm. um, so I did the ultrasound that was day four, and again, uh, so this is the uh, R1, and in the R1, as you can see, the pleura is pretty irregular. I can't, uh, I can't see any irrigation in this. Uh, uh, doc so sorry, Dr. Sharif, uh, I can't see your slides moving, actually. Um, can you see my cursor? Like, can you see my slide? Uh, no, it's kind of a frozen. I'm not sure if it, this is my problem or everybody is seeing the same thing. I can see R1, R2, R3, but I think this is from the previous case. Oh, the oh, slideshow is frozen. My advice would be, actually, you're not in slideshow mode. So if you could go to slideshow mode first. Or you might just have to close the presentation and open it again. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Can you see my screen now? Or... Okay. Not yet. Okay, just one second. Share screen. Yeah, now. Okay. We can see a screen, but not the presentation as yet. Okay, I will press maybe new share. Dr. Alok can shed some light on this. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not good. <laughs> uh, we can see your uh, slides now, yeah? Okay. So if you just go to slideshow mode, so just because at the moment you're showing us each individual slide without slideshow. So okay. just uh, if you go to full screen, uh, so the full I'm already on full screen. Um, you mean uh, from here, like yes. uh, close this side? Ah, uh, yes, I know what you mean. Like this one? Yes, beautiful. If you just click, ah, it's good, great, fantastic. Okay, right. So um, coming to R1, Yep. Uh, I can see that the pleura is sliding, however, it's not entirely regular. So I would say there is um, irregularity and I can't see 
air uh, a lines or, or b lines it's white out long in this field so no aeration moving to r2 uh sorry that was l1 uh, oh yes so that was uh r1 and this mm -hmm. is the uh i i got the m mode i, I tried to put the cursor here and um having that so i I wasn't entirely sure how to describe the M mode in a, an RDS baby. And I, I realized after that, after saving the images that maybe I could put the cursor on, on here, but I'm, uh, I wasn't entirely sure because I know that the seesaw is one of the signs that the like so normal- my, my only comment would be Dr. Dabur, just with the previous images as well, what has happened is that in order to accommodate all the images in one screen, We've kind of altered the width and the length of the image, which um, I mean, I think for us would not be a problem, but it just means that the interpretation of the images would be tricky. Mm -hmm. my, my advice would be that when you save the JPEG as is in that format, use an individual slide for each image if necessary. <laughs> and I'd advise everybody, don't worry about the time it takes, but put an individual image of the same without altering it. Uh, okay. I think when I look at that second image where you've got the M mode on, at this particular point, it looks like a seashore sign to me. Mm. Uh, the the yeah. challenge is because we've widened it. Uh, it's quite wide. It, oh, it just okay. gives us a stretched kind of a look. But mm. in terms of your cursor, what I'd say is you, you want to keep the cursor at a point on the plural line. And mm. like if the, if, if the entire image is completely uniform, like if you look at your first image, where you've got a uniform whiteout. Now there's no transition points in that image. So, you yeah. know, if you put your, and you did the mode at three points in that image and it looked absolutely the same as seashore sign, you'd save them. But if you had a point of transition where you were suddenly moving from this white profile to a, an A profile and there was absent plural sliding, then to see the LUN point, I would try to keep my cursor at that particular point. Yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah. thank you. And I think uh, the reason you're getting the kind of image you got for the M mode here is because your cursor is over the area where there is an acoustic shadowing of some kind. You can see there's a fallout there. It's all black. So the machine for the scanner, it's like there is nothing basically. Okay. Right. Um, so it gives you that kind of an image there. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So on this image, for example, the, the cursor should be somewhere here like that. Yes. yes. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so this is the um, R2. Um, again, I, I can see that the, there is some A lines here that comes uh, in the middle, which is relatively better than R1. Uh, the pleura is sliding and it's regular again with uh, micro um, uh, 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 consolidations underneath. Uh, and I can see some B lines as well. So it's it, it's it's A B profile, but it's mainly B. Uh, I can see. Um, um, was this? That was R five. So I went to R five because there was difficulty getting R three in this mm -hmm. baby. So R five, I could say if I compare it to R one and R two, R five is too much better in terms of variation. Um, there there is a good little sliding. And it really makes a difference getting the arm abducted in terms of the quality of the images. However, here again is slightly attenuated there. I couldn't see anything from here, but from what I can see, I can see that uh, there is AB profile, but it's mainly, um, like I would say, it's mixed, but I can see more aeration here. In R6, uh, uh, I believe it's uh, there is fluid sliding and it's um, irregular. It's mainly, sorry. It's mainly B profile. I can see uh, three or more, uh, or two, uh, two or three B lines uh, in each interpersonal space. Going to the left side, um, this is L1. You can see here uh, irregular plural sliding, um, and uh, it's uh, uh, I can see some confident B lines, if I'm not wrong, uh, but I can't see any uh, A lines there. And then here I can see double long point. Please correct me if I'm wrong. I can see two different 
uh, areas in the L2. Uh, um, here on the uh, upper side of the lungs, um, I can, or the left side of the screen, there is a uh, uh, mixed AB profile. Uh, however, on the right side of the screen here, I can see a white area, white out area. Mm -hmm. uh, this is LS3, again, it's a uh, uh, white out lung. I can't appreciate any um, uh, A or B lines, it's white out area. And here, uh, this L3, uh, I, I, I think, uh, uh, Abby, that's what you meant, that I need to be... Yeah, and that's a seashore sign. Yeah, I got the seashore sign. Um, and, um, yeah, it, it's white out and it's seashore sign. And here yeah. in L4, um, there is also a white out lung. Creation is not great. And the L5 here, um, again, there is a uh, white out lung. I can see any uh, A or B lines. Yeah, yeah. Um, beautiful yeah. images, uh, Dr. Sharif. And uh, if you start again from the R1, again, uh, the same thing. Um, uh, we'll try as much as possible to be perpendicular with the plural line. Um, the same comment as from the previous one uh, over the R1 area. But I agree, you know, there is no sort of a discrete plural line that you can uh, see. It's all a smudge out effect there. And uh, that basically uh, uh, means a sign of RDS on the, you can see sub, uh, you know, subharmonic consolidations um, uh, in the R1. Uh, so in uh, just uh, the image below that, I think that's R2. Yeah. So uh, again, you can, you can, you can see uh, subharmonic consolidations in that um, uh, image as well. Um, again, um, what I feel is uh, also there a bit of a thymus coming in there uh, in the R2 on the left hand side of the screen on the uh, of that image. That being right, um, yeah, yeah, that's that's the area. I, I believe that's the thymus coming in the picture. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, you can you can see smudged out uh, um, plural line um, and subharmonic consolidations there. However, your R5 looks very, you know, well aerated. Um, I can see occasional B lines, but it's mostly A profile there. Um, and the reason you can see very clearly for yourself in R5, you can see your ribs very clearly. You can see acoustic shadowing in between. Yeah. Whereas on the previous two images, you cannot see your ribs. So um, you have to take that with a little bit of a you know pinch of salt there, like uh, of that image captured. Um, nonetheless, uh, it is a it is a whiteout there. Uh, um, uh, I'm not denying that fact, but just to make the image more you know <clears throat> um, uh, precise, uh, this is what we need. The one which you have got in R5 and R6 area. Um, the reason for this sort of a differential, you know, aeration, as you have uh, said already, that baby has received surfactant by this point of time, and not sure that how much has gone into the lung. Yeah. Uh, I think some of it has reached <laughs> some portions of the lung, which is uh, well aerated uh, compared to the others. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. What do you think, Alok? I would agree. I think uh, there's an element of uh, differential aeration and uh, clearly I think the challenge with R5 and R6 images is we can only see up to two centimeters. Mm. That's where I would say that uh, what is happening is that uh, you, you, your alignment actually doesn't look too bad, but are you, uh, are you very close to the scapula? Uh, when you're doing R5, R6? I, I was much closer to the midline. You're much closer to the midline. So we're losing out the deeper portion and it might just be that you have to use a slightly lower frequency uh, and compromise. Or the other thing is as the baby's breathing and if yeah. he's not paralyzed, was the baby arching his back and were you losing contact? Uh, well, the baby was moving, yes. Yeah, yeah. So what happens with that is obviously uh, sound wave penetration is poorer. You know, if you compare this to R1, R2, where you've got good depth, yeah, yeah, actually yeah. you're losing out with two and three, and that's quite crucial if in particular you want to pick up areas of 
deep consolidation. So again, contact is very important. If you find the baby struggling, what I like to do is, often it's because I am, I'm not getting a good image and I'm pushing a little bit harder, which is making the baby uncomfortable. So what I do is I just rest the probe on the baby to try and get it nice and uh, uh, get good contact. The other thing that I would, I would strongly advise is the back of a baby, and this is just, uh, it's, it's, it's clinical experience. They have a huge number of proprioceptors, especially term babies and bigger babies. They, if, if you put cold gel and a cold probe onto the back, babies absolutely hate it as compared to the front of the chest, which is quite surprising. So I would always advise where possible, if you can, and we have gel sachets, sterile gel sachets, we just keep them to try and keep them a little bit warm. And like, if you have... Yeah, yeah. I, I got them usually from a warm, uh, uh, like we, we warm them. I know it's very useful. I look, I agree. Uh, my apologies. I'm feeding you eggs. Uh, but yeah, just, I think a little bit of uh, a better contact. If you feel you have good contact and you're still struggling, you might have to lose, use a lower frequency and don't hesitate. You know, you've got your upper image here. You've got the information that you have from your upper image. Uh, so it's really the deeper content that we kind of focus on. So, you know, but otherwise I would agree with Abhijit. Good images, probably differential aeration uh, of the lungs, secondary to surfactant. And, you know, be very interesting to see a subsequent image. Just yeah. To, yeah, sorry, yeah, Abhijit, carry on. Yeah, sorry, hello. Yeah, no, uh, my, my question to Dr. Sirif was the baby on prone, uh, Priya, you know, most of the time when you did a scan? Yes, yeah. yeah, that would also indicate better aeration of because you have R5 and R6 yeah. superior. So, again, if you look at gravity, maybe that explains why R1 and R2 are a little bit more dense as compared. So, yeah. again, take into account the position of the baby it's very very important yeah Thank you. lovely what we're going to do is just uh, uh i believe there are some people in the waiting room i've been told it's quite late to join but i can't see anybody else okay so what i would say is uh, the next person to present uh, if you could stop sharing your screen yeah. will be doris so doris are you are you available Yes, I am. Uh, Abhi, how long is your presentation today? Um, I just have two or three cases. No, no, no problems. I'm just, uh, I was just asking Abhijit how long his presentation will be. Um, I look, uh, I mean, forty-five minutes to one hour, depending on how many uh, practice slides we want. So my gut feeling at the moment is, Doris, we might stop with you today, and I will have to humbly apologize to the fourth person who was due to present and put you on for first next time, if that's okay. I, I hope they don't mind. Yeah, that's that's perfectly fine. Mayank, I'm so sorry. I keep postponing you, but I promise you, <laughs> that, that's it's, okay. a, it's the golden handshake. You will be the first person to present in the next session. Or if we can finish it earlier than 45 minutes, maybe Mayank can present sure. at the end of so it. We've got, we've got 11 minutes. Let's go for it. Uh, uh, Doris, go for it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Sorry, I'm just this coming. Yeah. Okay. Um. So the first case I will start with. Um. If you could just go into full slideshow yeah. mode. Yeah, that's. Yeah. Okay. Um. So the first case is I will start with is actually a follow up of the case I presented the last time. So this was a um, expert 23 week, uh, 540 grams at birth, um, had a dose of Kirosef after birth, had hypertension and the ventilator settings for the first 24 hours. Um, so it was not in a lot of oxygen, about 25 to 30% oxygen, um, but developed pulmonary hemorrhage um, after 24 hours and was um, on high frequency in 100% oxygen and then also had bilateral grade four IVH. Um, so at that point on day two of life, the um, long ultrasound scans I got, I just got the anterior, oops, sorry. I just got the anterior views only. And on the, the left side, um, these are the previous images. The images I will discuss are follow-up images. Yeah. So on the left side, 
I could clearly see that the plural, this was after 24 hours with some um, pulmonary hemorrhages. Um, the plural was quite irregular, um, as you could see with um, um, so plural consolidations, there was um, mainly B um, lines, which was not, um, so essentially a B profile, but there was plural sliding. And on the right side also, you could also appreciate um, the same. The plural was looking very irregular, um, as you can see. Um, there was plural sl sliding uh, with all these areas of subplural consolidation. Um, I think there were very few A lines, as you can see, but mainly B lines, so basically a B profile. So I did a follow-up long ultrasound scan on day 12 of life. So after day two, sorry, I'm just going to plug my device before it goes off. So after, um, after day two, the, um, this baby was transferred to a surgical unit for surgical review um, after developing an iatrogenic oesophageal perforation. So came back um, on day seven of life and I repeated the long ultrasound scan on day 12 of life. So he was still ventilated. Um, the pulmonary hemorrhage had resolved. He was on conventional ventilation and in about 40 to 50% oxygen and was on, on antibiotics for staph sepsis. Um, this was his x-ray um, at that point. And so these images starting on the left side and, and I compared it with the previous images on day two of life. You can still appreciate that the plural still looked um, irregular and with these areas of subplural consolidation, um, these tiny areas, I wasn't entirely sure whether they were static air bron bronchograms. Um, there is plural sliding, but mainly B lines, which you can see all clearly, see clearly, um, which highlights a B profile. And um, out of curiosity, I put the I put it on the M mode to see what it would show. Um, I was trying to differentiate between this, the C show appearance, but I don't think this is. I don't. I I couldn't really say whether this was a C show appearance um, at this point. So and then um, it continued on. So now I use a hockey stick, and because it was such a small baby, I didn't do an L one and an L two view. So I did an anterior and the lateral view. So on the lateral view, the L3 on the left side, so you can appreciate the plural. So this is in, I, I try to capture the M mode too. So you can appreciate um, on this side, the plural is not continuous, it's all broken down and I was suspecting that this is thread sign and uh, with lots of plural, so plural consolidation. Um, but you can still appreciate that there is plural sliding, mainly B um, lines. I did not see any A lines at all. Um, so which highlights that this is also a B profile. So now I'm going to the right side, um, on the right anterior side, um, same, you can appreciate the plural, still looks irregular um, with small, with areas of so plural consolidation. Um, there is plural side sliding. I can see some comet tails, um, but I can still appreciate mainly B, um, B lines and they seem um, coalesced. I think these are A lines, but you have mainly B lines. So which yeah. yes, highlights that this is a B profile. Okay, and um, R3 also, um, you can appreciate the plural also, quite um, call, um, irregular and coarse with subplural consolidations and these areas of consolidation. There is plural sliding and also mainly um, B, pro B lines only seen, the B profile, I couldn't even see any A lines um, um, in this um, scan. I'm sorry. So this is the first case. I don't know if you want to say anything. We want to talk about it before I move to the second case. Um, yeah, lovely images, Doris. And the, um, uh, you mentioned this baby had pulmonary hemorrhage. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, 
Um, uh, we're going to talk something about pulmonary hemorrhage today, but uh, um, it's, it was very clearly visualized here. You have broken pleura, you know, subpleural consolidations. Um, uh, you can see some bigger areas of consolidation there with the uh, shred sign as well. Um, and as you know, blood is also a fluid. You can see all the you know B lines coming predominantly B profile in all the uh, lung zones. Slightly well aerated on R1 and L1 areas. We can see some A lines with an eye of eight there. Um, but um, yeah, all other zones I can see mostly B lines. Uh, with the irregular broken uh, uh, plural uh, line. Um, and on the M mode interrogation, yes, those are the, um, you know, the seashore sea or the sandy beach uh, sign. Okay. Um, and you can see nice T lines also coming up there. Uh, maybe it's quite tachycardic just looking at that. Um, um, yeah. Uh, lovely images. I'm not sure about your gain setting. I mean, uh, we do have some fallout of uh, images on the lower half of the uh, screen. It it does comes up occasionally, but uh, most of the time we are losing out on the um, uh, images on the lower half of the screen from three centimeter and beyond. Okay. Uh, might be because of the gain setting as well. Okay, so should I use a higher gain? Yeah, I mean, if you have if you have an eye scan button that you can use that one, or you have to manually, uh, you know, um, uh, increase the gain for the lower part of the screen. Okay. Um, but beautiful images. Thank you. And then, sorry, just going to the R three image. So, mm -hmm. are these static air bronchograms or are they consolidation? So yeah, th those look like a static uh, air bronchogram. Um, yeah, I mean uh, the best way to uh, you know uh, to differentiate between a static and a, a dynamic bronchogram is to zoom in in that area where you can see more clearly what the uh, the character of the bronchogram is. Um, but just by glancing at it, it looks more like a static bronchogram. Um, yeah. Okay. And then, um, sorry, so Abhijit, uh, I'm sorry? so sorry, Abhijit. Do you want to tell the group what T lines are? Just because not everybody will know. And they're the T lines, yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, we're going to cover that in the presentation today anyway. But the T lines are uh, because I cannot show it in my cursor here, it will be a little difficult. But T lines basically that the, uh, the, the word T comes from transmitted, so it's a transmitted cardiac pulse on the lung. That's what T-line is. So, so uh, basically you can see waves with the seashore sign. So you see the slight pattern change and Abhijit will be able to show it to you, which kind of looks like a small interruption in the sandy beach. You know, it's as if the pattern you get is like when somebody runs through the sandy beach and leaves their footprints yeah. in between. So carry on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Okay, so I'll go to the next case. All right. Spent a weekend doing long ultrasound scans. Thankfully, all the babies were stable enough for me to do them. Um, so this case was also quite interesting. So this was a 25 week. Uh, um, born by spontaneous vaginal delivery after preterm labor. Mom had antenatal steroids and magnesium sulfate. Baby was born in poor condition, required, um, was intubated quite quickly, required 240 milligrams of Curacef. Uh, he was extubated on day 12, but was reintubated on day 12, sorry, on day 10, and was reintubated on day 12. And um, when he was reintubated, re he was put on conventional ventilation, about 35 to 40% oxygen, but his FiO2 was rising and his um, pressures on the ventilator were rising. He was on volume guarantee of six mils per kilo. Uh, he was on antibiotics for suspected sepsis when he was reintubated. And I did this long ultrasound on day 13 of life. Mm -hmm. So this is the L1 um, the image. So I, I don't, I don't think I, I don't know that I can describe the, that there is no plural <laughs> because it's just so broken down. So this is the shred sign, isn't it? 
or I think. Yes. Uh, yeah, so I, I'm not sure I can say that there's a plural, but you can appreciate plural sliding and um, yeah. lines. Um, Almost Sorry, like Doris. I'll just come up. I'll come in here um, just to make sure to the group that shred sign by definition is not broken plural line. So broken plural line is what we have seen with Sharif's and uh, Jaridin's um, uh, scans at the beginning, where you have discontinuity on the plural line. That's that's broken plural line. When we talk about the shred sign, it's the border, irregular border of the consolidated area. So you can see you cannot see any plural line here. But it's a straight sign because uh, uh, these areas are consolidated. You can see some hyperaquaic, which is bright white in color, uh, you know, small roundish or sometimes a horizontal line, bright hyperaquaic areas. Interspaced by, you can see some anaquaic areas, like, you know, uh, slightly, um, uh, I mean, uh, on the darker side, on the gray scale or towards the black. If you can see, I, I cannot show with, with my. Um, cursor here, but you can you can appreciate there are small areas where there is a um, yes yes indeed uh, that is that is the space where you can see an aquatic areas. So that's an area of consolidation, and uh, the consolidations always have an irregular margin, and that irregular margin is called uh, fractal sign or shred sign, which is uh, typical of uh, consolidate uh, consolidations. Yeah, Doris, carry on. Okay. And then I put the M mode on. So mm -hmm. This is the sandy beach or seashore. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. And um, so I tried to get an L2 view. I think this is the heart, and I kept trying to um, move the probe to get the heart out of view, but I wasn't really successful. But I could still appreciate the plural and some. Consolidation. Yes, and consolidation and some plural sliding. So L3, um, you can still appreciate, I can appreciate the plural, um, but still with some so plural consolidation, there's plural sliding and a few A lines, but mainly B lines from what I can see. And sorry, I'll just move. So to L, R1. Mm -hmm. So R1. Um, the, I, I don't know if I can say the plural is continuous here or all this is, um, all this, this is red time. But as it moves, you almost think it's continuous, but I don't think it is. The, um, so I think I would say this is shred sign also. Yeah. 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 Yes, and you can see that small anechoic area in, uh, in the middle coming up there. Yeah, 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 that's the one. And it seems to change as the, uh, um, as the baby is breathing, yeah. 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 But there's, but you can still appreciate plural sliding and mainly B, B lines. I can see some faint A lines, but this is mainly yeah. a B profile. From yeah. What I can see. Can I also say just on the right hand side, wonder what you think, Abhiji, just extreme right R1. So if you just go, yeah, just there, that area. Yeah, yeah. The dynamic air bronchograms just up and down, just at the bottom there. What do you think? Yeah, possible. Uh, look, uh, the best way to describe this one would be a color Doppler interrogation yeah. in that area to see yeah. if there is an increased, uh, you know, blood That's flow. Clarity. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And um, the R two view also is the same. Um, straight sign B profile all the way through. I. Uh, we can't see any A lines, and there seems to be this area that seems to come at the yes, this. So I don't know whether that's a consolidation. See that, uh, um, but mainly this is mainly a B. This is mainly B profile, and then R three, the plural seems uh, more regular compared to all the other views. But you can still appreciate so plural consolidation. You have plural sliding clearly, and also a preponderance of uh, B lines, compact B lines, so a B profile. Yeah, Doris. Uh, again, I would like to come here in the. Uh, uh, I think that was R three. Yes, so uh, R two. Sorry, uh, in R two, uh, yes, we can see consolidations, 
shirt sign and yes you can see b lines now because you can see a shirt sign you know the consolidated area and um, irregular margin and everything i would like to call that as a c profile c for consolidation okay. so there is a profile there is b profile now um uh, uh, the c takes the precedence here because uh, that is not something you see uh, um because there has been some sort of a process going on there so it's heavily consolidated area that uh, you know um that uh, lung zone so i will call that as a c profile there okay whereas in r3 you can see a predominantly b lines you know um, um and i think with an eye of faith i can see some a lines but that that is the one where you can say it's b profile oh i see okay yeah Um, I've already shown this, and um, yeah, this were his X-rays. So his X-ray on the one of life, and his um, it was after Kurosev was given ET tube at T2 NG tube in place. Well, his lung fields, um, you can see, uh, looked patchy, and then the twelfth of life after he was reintubated again, the lung fields certainly look more hazy. And yeah. Look, yeah. Just out of interest, on a day one X-ray, the UVC is going more, veering towards the right. Yeah, it was, yeah. So it was removed. The UVC was removed. This is the UA, but the, yeah, the UVC was was removed, and um, a long line. Was <coughs> after this, yeah. Yep. Um, okay. Um, I would show one more, and then that is it for the because of time. So I wouldn't. I have that. Okay, I will discuss this. One. So this one is another um, baby, 25 week. Uh, um, mom came in with PV bleeds and bulgy membranes, so there was no time to give antenatal steroids or magnesium sulfate. Baby was born in poor condition, no heart rate, no respiratory effort. Um, was given CPR for 33 minutes and intubated at 14 minutes of life. Um, on transfer to the new natal unit was noted to have a, um, a pneumothorax, so a chest string was inserted and he was transferred to us. And when he came to us, um, the chest string wasn't bubbling anymore, so it was clamped and removed after 24 hours, and his um, oxygen requirement improved, and um, he was extubated actually after 24 hours, and um, this long ultrasound done, scan was done on day 8 of life. At this point, he was on high flow, eight liters in about 25% oxygen when this long ultrasound was done. So um, starting with the R1 image, you can appreciate the pleura. Um, it looks continuous. I think um, I don't know that I'll describe this as some, some pleural consolidation, um, but there's pleural sliding that we you can see clearly and lots of there are B lines and I think some A lines. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I think there are some comet tails, but you still see plural and B lines, I mean, going all the way right down. Um, so maybe I'll describe this as a A B profile. Yeah, I'm not sure anyway. And then this was the, the M mode done. I think which shows the sandy beach appearance, I think. And then R2, you manage to get R2, you still appreciate the plural, um, which is um, continuous and regular. You can appreciate some, the plural, um, yeah, I think it's ultra plural sliding. And I think there are some comet tails. There's a comet tail and um, some, B lines, but there are not a lot of B lines. Um, I was a bit concerned that the plural on this side was not moving, but when I look closer, I think there is plural sliding all the way. I think this is the lever coming into view. Um, R3, the plural looks um, continuous as we can see and regular, there is plural sliding. Um, I can appreciate A lines, and B lines also. And so I think I would say this is an AB profile. Mm -hmm. Okay, I got that right, yeah. And then R3, um, 
plural is continuous um, with plural sliding, comet tails um, seen, but there's also B lines. And I think there are some A lines with an eye of it, but it looks like mainly B lines. Same. And L1, so with L1, um, you can appreciate the plural. Um, I don't know whether these are comet tails or the plural, or this is a plural consolidation because it looks thicker. Um, wasn't I wasn't really sure, um, but you can appreciate the plural is sliding, and I see just mainly B lines. I can't see any A lines, and I know this is the heart coming into view, and then. I don't know why, in fact, I saved this because I didn't know why the M mode looked like this. Um, so I just saved it. Um, I think that that's uh, M mode is interrogating your heart. Ah, okay. Yeah. And um, just to answer your question, uh, Doris, for L1 uh, image, uh, are these, uh, can you see comet tail artifacts there or lung rockets there? So, um, if you see B lines, there is no question of um, lung rockets or um, um, uh, cometal artifacts because cometal artifacts do not erase A line. So you will see A line and then you will see some short, you know, projections coming from the pleura, but it doesn't erase the A line. So A line stays there, you know, um, your art, uh, cometal artifacts will come. When there's a white out basically the b lines are coming your a lines disappears it's all b lines okay. so then we don't have to talk about the uh do we see cometal artifacts or not it's it's really difficult you can't comment on that so it will be all b lines okay. when you see like two or three b lines in between there could be cometal artifacts but then there will be a lines as well like we see in a normal normal um a lung scan of a newborn baby, you can see because up to three lines is normal. You can have three uh, B lines. Uh, it could be interspaced by the cometal artifacts, but then you'll have A lines as well because it's a normal lung. Okay. Yeah. So when you have complete whiteout, your A lines disappears. You only have B lines. Now you don't you don't see um, cometal artifacts or the lung rockets. Okay. If that makes sense. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> it does. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so the L2 view, I, I wasn't so sure what I was, what I was um, seeing. Maybe I think this must be the heart. Um, I saved it anyway. And then L3. So mm -hmm. with L3, uh, you can see the plural um, clearly, but um, there is plural sliding, but mainly B, B lines. Um, all the way i can't see any a line so this is also clearly a b profile and yeah yeah and yeah this was the x-ray so this was the x-ray on admission which you can see clearly with the chest drain in situ et tube um ng tube and the uac and uvc in situ and um i think this was the most recent this was before when the baby was reintubated again. So after the after the long ultrasound scan, the baby it wasn't my fault. Then we developed apneas, radis, and desaturations. Not when I was doing the scan or after a few hours after, mm -hmm. I had to be reintubated again. So this was the chest X-ray after the baby was reintubated, and the lines were taken out at this point. I think there were concerns of sepsis, so the Umbilical lines were taken out and then you started on antibiotics and a long line was put in after that. Um, yeah, that's it. And what is, Doris, what's the big CRP of this baby? Um, so yeah, the CRP um, after after the second X-ray, when baby was reintubated again, um, rose, Rose, rose to I think about 60, 70 or 80, and the baby had um, blood culture positive sepsis. So clear sepsis yeah. after this. Yeah. So it was clearly septic. Baby, baby was clearly septic. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah, lovely images, Doris. Um, uh, only thing I think uh, um, uh, while doing the scan, we have to be more mindful of the uh, gain setting as we are losing out more on the you know lower half of the image. Um, that is 
something we would like to uh, um, uh, address, but otherwise lovely images. I mean, we are getting the information what we need. Yeah, yeah. And uh, in this particular case, um, uh, you know, is it pulmonary hemorrhage giving that appearance or is it uh, sepsis giving that appearance is quite difficult to comment. Um, we can talk about consolidations and differentiate it uh, with a color Doppler, which we're going to speak in today's uh, session. Um, but overall, pulmonary, pulmonary hemorrhage. hemorrhage. Abby, there was no pulmonary hemorrhage. The baby didn't have pulmonary hemorrhage. Oh, not this one. Okay, yeah. Uh, but on the previous, uh, you know, uh, case, um, um, it's it's difficult to say the image. Uh, you know, the the kind of uh, signs we are seeing on the scan is because of what until we you know color uh, interrogate the areas of consolidations. Uh, but we'll talk about that in the session today. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. So Abhijit, are you happy to share your screen? Uh, yes, I'll, I'm just doing that. Yeah. Just, just while Abhijit is sharing his screen, just a few questions that I'm going to answer. So first of all, uh, one of the questions that Mayank asked, which is an absolutely beautiful question, is do when you're oscillated uh, and brutal sliding, and this is a very important thing. So when you have air trapping and you have a lot of, uh, say, uh, kind of uh, air in the lungs, brutal sliding can be diminished. So if you get a pure A profile and you kind of paralyzed and you have a lot of air trapping, you, you, brutal sliding can be diminished. In a pneumothorax, brutal sliding will be absent, not diminished. So, you know, it's really important that if you want to focus on the plural sliding, you can zoom in on that, on the plural, put your focus into the plural. But air trapping, yeah, commonly plural sliding can be reduced. A uh, few other questions. In the case of C profile, do we think more of infection? No, C profile indicates consolidation. It could indicate deep consolidation. It could indicate uh, sub, uh, you know, uh, plural consolidations of a, a, a decent kind of nature. But, Really, what we're talking about here is the fact that you've got an area of lung that is uh, consolidated uh, as opposed to just pure infection. Now, if with the C profile, you have shred sign, you have dynamic air bronchograms, and you put color Doppler and you see that it looks really vascular compared to surrounding areas, then yes, you should suspect a mnemonic kind of a process or an infective process going on. If the CRP is high, you should suspect it. Uh, again, uh, Dr. Atnafu's asked, what would increased vascularity indicate? Well, it indicates that you have increased blood flow to that region of the lung. And if it's broken down and you have shred sign or you have dynamic air bronchograms or dynamic fluid bronchograms, you know, exudate going in and out of the lung, which actually looks dark as opposed to looking bright, then that usually indicates, uh, you know, possibly an infective process. Other things, obviously, that sometimes you might see, you might not see air bronchograms and fluid bronchograms, but you might see an area of lung that has increased vascularity, which indicates that there might be something congenital going on there. So without further ado, I'm going to let Abhijit start. I've, inc I've, I've increased the time of the session, Abhijit, so don't worry, you can carry on. <laughs> 